Good morning again. Glad to know you're still here on The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Right now is time where we take a look at the day's papers and see the big issues that affect you and I. And uh, Sarah what are the stories we're starting with this morning? Okay, so we're going to kick off with the Nigerian Tribune, uh, the major one that you can already see. It's going to be on your screen in a few seconds. Um, it's talking about something we already mentioned, and that is schools resume amid COVID-19 spike. Mm -hmm. Uh, federal government and states must not renege and put in place necessary preventive measures, and that is from ASU. Teachers ready for resumption. Private schools have measures in place, and that is from the NUT and NAPST. We also have the writer to that story. Confusion over HOS Circular on uh, stay-at-home order for civil servants in Lagos. Also on the Nigerian Tribune, top of the screen there, you can't hide under subsidy to punish Nigerians. That is from Labour. Confusion in the National Assembly over subsidy regime. Also, 66 years after free education, scholars, experts prefer way forward. Um, Ikiti sets aside 1.4 billion naira for Amotekun. INEC lists five challenges ahead of 2023 elections. And also, federal government has refused to renew passport of NSAS protesters, Femi Falano alleges. Uh, foreign diplomats must obtain NIN, says the federal government. And also, um, in a battle for Mari, or Mate, sorry, military kills scores of Boko Haram terrorists, destroys six gun trucks. And bandits kill 10 in Zamfara, abduct 17 in Niger, kill 80-year-old and four others in Kaduna State. Soldiers accompany Fulani headsmen to our community, Ogun, um, Obas alleged in petition to the army. And also APC membership revalidation, tension as chieftains battle for party structures and supremacy. Those are the ones who were taken on the Tribune this morning. And just before our guest joins us, uh, we're just going to you know, have quick conversations about these ones. Um, I, I think we probably would start with uh, the um, federal government refusing to renew passports. And um, I think some bank accounts are still frozen of the NSAS protesters. Um, it has continued to create conversation across the country, uh, mostly on social media, though. And, you know, a lot of people see it as unfair. Um, and, you know, we're still wondering what exactly, you know, these accounts are frozen for. You know, what, what's the, you know, what, where's the sense in keeping these accounts frozen? If these persons are going to be charged with something, if there's an investigation still going on, how long does it really take for whatever investigation that needs to be, you know, carried out to, you know, to be concluded? And um, what, you know, does the federal government hope to achieve, you know, at the end? Um, so there is, there's a lot of angles, you know, that, you know, this can be seen from. There's, you know, a lot of them, you know, would argue that um, it is just simply bullying. You know, that's what, you know, some people would say. Some people would say it's just clearly injustice to these persons who, you know, played their part um, somehow, some way during the NSAS protests. You know, maybe directly, maybe indirectly. I have no idea who these persons are. Um, but it would always be a part of the conversation and people would always, you know, bring this up as... Um, some level of injustice that is still going on in Nigeria today. I think what is a bit weird for me is how things continue to happen like this and how the governments think they can basically pull the wool over our eyes. For this instance, when you know the news broke that there were fro freezing accounts of NSAS protesters and uh, government officials began to speak, and I couldn't believe their response to this, saying that it was not linked to the NSAS protests, that these guys had been linked, so to speak, with internet fraud, with money laundering, and so many other accusations that you and I and you, in fact, watching will find unbelievable, yeah. saying that's exactly why the accounts were frozen, that the submission or the request to freeze their accounts were, you know, made before the NSAS protest. I don't see how that, that matches up. But anyway, that's what the government is right. saying. We'll uh, go on a short break. When we come back, we'll be joined by our guest so he can, you know, obviously share his thoughts on these stories. Stay with us. Welcome back once again. Uh, still is uh, The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa, and we're currently going through the stories making headlines across uh, the country this morning. Uh, we have uh, joined us uh, Mr. Libros Oshoman to share his thoughts on these uh, major stories. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Yeah, good, good morning. morning. 
Yeah, good morning. All right. So uh, we already had started talking about the uh, story from uh, Femi Falano, who, you know, is saying that the federal government has refused to renew the passport of NSAS protesters. Um, accounts of uh, some of them are still frozen. Um, there's also a story on uh, schools uh, resuming um, amid the uh, COVID-19 spike. Um, Labour is saying you can't hide under subsidy to punish Nigerians. Uh, we also have uh, here on the Nigerian Tribune, um, it, it's a um, crisis, of course, with regards to uh, security. It says bandits kill 10 in Zamfara, abduct 17 in Niger State, kill an 80-year-old woman, and four others in uh, Kaduna State. Um, so let's quickly just rush through this one so we can move to a, another newspaper. Yeah, uh, uh, quickly, uh, please permit me to start from um, the same place you started from, uh, um, the federal government is making a very big mistake. They've, um, if, if we do not handle this NSAS, the aftermath of the NSAS crisis, you know, very well, the message the government is sending to would-be protesters is that next time they should, you know, be very careful, cross their T's and dot their I's. And so they would want to avoid situations when they will have bank accounts here. You know, because if um, the government has till date been unable to track Boko Haram even more than 12 years after, it means that, you know, when the issue started, government takes, took similar steps and then they missed the opportunity to ensure that they nipped it in the bud. That's what they are doing again now with the NSAS. And once you allow this get out of hand, it, 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 quite unfortunate, when it happens again, a, a lot, you know, of um, Nigerians might not survive it. I, I'm not a prophet of doom, but with what I see and um, all of the issues that led to the protests, you know, government is not even bothered any longer. Forget all these uh, five for five uh, demands, acceptance, and, you know, we still have all of them with us. Um, even the police restructuring and reformation is still the same way it is. And now, you, you know, you're witch hunting certain persons despite not taking them through the provisions you know of the the constitutional provisions of trial you know you just you know um, mark out certain persons and say you you won't renew their passport i know some persons will quickly point to america and say oh, if this happened in america they will take even you know similar steps and the rest and then they begin to compare it with what happened at the capitol hill with, um, with nigeria there yes. are two different cases people should understand that that one, you should compare apple for apple. The, the protest in Nigeria, you should compare it with the Black Lives Matter protests. Um, and then compare the invasion of the Capitol Hill with this mass snatching in Nigeria. That's, you know, that's when you, you talk about apple for apple. But what happened to the, those that invaded the National Assembly and even took away the maze? Nothing happened. And today you're talking about you know, not renewing passports for... Um, protesters. And we know in Africa, you know, it's, our borders are porous. So, anyway, that, that, that said, um, um, the issue, the other issue of um, um, school resumption, I listened, I took time yesterday to listen to um, Honorable, uh, Honorable, I do I address him now, Professor, Professor Honorable. Uh, Julius Ohiwari, <laughs> and um, he made some salient and valid points. But with the point he made, uh, that means this year, I don't think any child would go to school because everything he listed that are not there, it will take time for any government to put those things in. If we truly want to comply with the protocols, even as listed by the NCDC, yes. it will take one year knowing our government, for local government, states, and um, federal government to put those structures in place. But, agreed, I want this, not even, if not all, but let government attempt to even put some of the basic, basics in place. It is easy for you to find them in private schools that can easily be sanctioned. But the public schools where you have most of our people, it is difficult to find these things. Even some of the ones close to me. Mm. Even some of the public schools close to me in my area, in Lagos, I'm not talking about village now. In the villages, it's almost as if it's non-existent. 
COVID is non-existent because they don't discuss it, they don't talk about it. It is when you come from Lagos, they say, oh, you have brought COVID. Indeed. <laughs> Let's okay. now turn our focus to uh, the Punch newspaper. The big story here says, Nigeria may waste 100,000 COVID-19 vaccine doses, and that's according to experts. Don't disregard expert advice. NMA tells FG as schools resume. Buhari, Abiodun, others pay tributes as ex-minister Martin Tukui buried. Senate kicks as Petroleum Ministry spends 98.4 trillion naira, 98.4 million naira, I beg your pardon, on flyers. Army conniving with herdsmen on attacks, and that's according to a monarch in Ogun State. This one says Pencom reviews payments as 65,000. 419 diseased relatives claim 215.27 billion naira. NIN, FG insist on Wednesday deadline, diplomats registration. Bandits kill octogenarian, 14 others in Zamfara Kaduna attacks. Envoys list, Bahari posts ex-ministers to UK, Spain, Miniki to US. Let's, uh, let's talk quickly about this COVID story. Now, the experts are saying because the vaccines that we're expecting, 100,000 doses of a vaccine we're expecting, require to be stored in low temperature, and we understand the past situation in Nigeria, you know, transportation, storage, that these are the issues that may affect the vaccines, and if we have them in the country, they may just go to waste. What's, the, what are your thoughts on this? <coughs> Excuse me. The, the problem is not whether they will, may go to waste. The problem is that we might end up um, you know, giving um, expired vaccines to our citizens. Um, it still boils down to the issue of, you know, this, you, you, they all have um, a common trend. Resumption of schools, COVID, um, protocol compliance, and, you know, all of that. The vaccines. Here, the, even there have been so many doubts cast, casted in the mind of people, not just in Nigeria, but you find out that in other places, I speak to you now, today, from today, the British government is opening more centers to vaccinate people, including cathedrals are being donated. And so they are sensitizing people. It's on the news daily. What is our national orientation agency doing? What is the Minister of Information doing? Nothing. They are waiting for private radio and TV stations to just, you know, do their job for them. You know, so... There is no adequate attempt to sensitize people mm. or the importance of the vaccine. There have been, um, what do you call it, also uh, conspiracy theorists on the vaccines, including, you know, educated people saying, look, we are not too sure of these vaccines. You know, and then you now have a country that is not prepared for the commonest uh, 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 Compliance, that is storage. You know, we do not have, government has not shown us to say, oh, this is the steps, these are the measures we have taken in various states so that when we send these vaccines to these states, these are the, this is um, the temperature under which we will store them. These are the places where they will be stored in areas where they will be vaccinated. So it shows that we're not ready. We are truly not ready. And that's the same thing I was talking about, school resumption. When you, you, you reel out protocols and then you now say in, in your, your uh, what do you call it, um, uh, seculars, you say after wide consultations with all stakeholders and data collected. That's for me, it's, you know, a, a broad statement, mm. not tied to specifics. And so when you now want to talk, you say, oh, the federal government said data collected. Where did they collect the data from? Answer mm. unknown. So, did they come to collect data in those public schools in your area or in my area? The answer is no. Mm. Even in the big cities where they are collecting data, they just collect data in a few places. And, you know, so that's why some people are even asking, even the testing that we are doing, how many of these places are we actually testing? Some, in some states, testing is not going on at all. They have even the, the, the like I said last time, even the temporal structures that were put in place had been collapsed, including Lagos. You know, so when you now begin to talk about vaccines, and then you bring them publicly, you vaccinate uh, the president, vice president, and a few ministers, you think that 
people would just voluntarily allow themselves to be vaccinated when they do not know mm -hmm. the processes for storing sure. these things. So how would you expect me to take a vaccine that probably right. had expired? I understand that. We're really running short on time, so I just wanted to, to take a look at just one more story on the punch before we uh, draw the curtains on the segment. Okay, let's uh, let's just do that with the next uh, paper here. And the one here is uh, the Daily uh, Independent. The story here says, FG's borrowing puts CBN's price stability remit at risk. Foreclosure law on trial as COVID-19 second wave surges. Stop Buhari from selling public assets to fund budgets. And that's Sarah speaking to members of the National Assembly. Dangote completes Nigeria's longest concrete road. NIN is mandatory for diplomats, says FG, and uh, federal government asking EFCC to forward cases on patients, Jonathan, uh, in addition to other big stories, including this one about uh, doubts persisting over aviation sector recovery in 2021. Uh, which of the stories would you like to take a look at? All this of morning? them are very, very um, stories I would like to talk on briefly, quickly. Um, borrowing. Uh, it is good to borrow big nations borrow but you must have um, not just a repayment plan a workable repayment plan that truly at the end of the day because these days um, the issue of sovereignty yeah. usually in most uh, contract or borrow, borrowing a loan agreement is waived because you can't take my money go develop your country and then you now say you're a sovereign nation and you're unable to pay. I, cannot, I can't assess that infrastructure. So in most of this international loan, it is waived. And so that's why when you borrow and you do not have a proper structure to repay, you're putting your people consistently in debt and um, might end up mortgaging their sovereignty in the long run. That we see happen, happening in West African, some African countries. And then the issue of price stability. You cannot, you can't stabilize your currency when you produce nothing. We do not produce anything here. We are not even making attempt to produce. Even, I, 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 I keep saying, farming without value added will end you as, as a poor man. We we'll keep talking about farming. Go to farm, go to farm. There are no plans for off-takers. There are no plans for storage. There are no pl plans for processing. So these are ways you can also show up your local currency because you know your, your balance of trade you know would um, uh, um, uh, be up a little bit but here yeah, all those plans are not there and so for me what cbn is just basically doing is what you call kick and follow mm. you know chasing <laughs> dreams and then the press will help them to 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 blow those stories we really do not have those those plans in place until we sit down and look at ourselves and say okay now when we closed the borders, I had expected that, yes, we're closing borders. We would have, just the way we have encouraged rice milling, rice processing. We now would, I can say to some extent, that you can boast of, you know, local rice production competing. Yes. But how many of that do we have? Tomatoes in December, on Christmas Day, a basket of tomatoes that was selling for 15000 sold for 1000 naira. All right, Let, let's, let's wrap it up here. We still have you here uh, to discuss uh, the uh, case of underage voting in um, Kano State local government elections. Uh, that comes up in a bit, but for now, this is where we wrap up the, of the press uh, segment of the, uh, of the breakfast. Uh, thank you very much for staying with us. We'll be back after the short break.